Good morning. Good morning. So we didn't sleep in as late as yesterday. We got up at more of our regular time of like 7.15, 7.30, but it kind of makes sense considering the fact that we went to sleep early last night at like 11. We were just kind of exhausted from walking around all day in the heat and the sun. So in the interest of having a more relaxing day, then the plan is to just take it easy. I'm gonna go grab some breakfast and chill out for a little bit. And then um, in the afternoon, we've got some uh, tickets to some museums, including the Jardin Majorel. So yeah, we're gonna basically take advantage of that and anything else that we get to do along the way will be a bonus. <laughs> stops along the way at like the pharmacy because we've run out of sunscreen, hit up the bank for a little bit of money for the hammam tomorrow, and just take in all the sights and sounds and smells along the way. Let's do it. We've actually stopped for a spot of lunch just before we go in. And yeah, this place seems to be selling 25 dirham sandwiches. So yeah, it should be a very cheap lunch indeed. I got a ground beef sandwich and Nick has chicken in his sandwich.
exited the Berber Museum and my impression is how they took everyday objects like combs, mirrors, guns, their beekeeping supplies, their carpets, their clothes, their tableware and put such intricate and elaborate design detail into each piece. They all just seem so special as opposed to what we have today which is just a plain white plate or a functional toothbrush or comb. So I found that like really interesting. I think the most fascinating thing for me is that in comparison to a lot of European ancient civilizations that have since kind of slowly but surely been phased out, the Berbers in particular have been around since like 9,000 years before Christ. So the fact that they have stood the test of time, that they've integrated so well into society and they still maintain their culture, their identity, all of that is so huge. So genuinely being in a place where that's so celebrated is a real honor. I'm not really kind of a high fashion person and by any stretch of the imagination, but it was still cool and interesting to kind of see where certain designers get their influences from and things like that. And yeah, just kind of seeing sort of what, like how people, especially creative people, get their influences. So that was pretty neat. I think if there was kind of one comment that I would say though is that, I mean, we paid 220 dirham for the whole package. So we're not just talking about the Sanaha Museum, but we're also talking about the gardens and also the Berber Museum. And for that, I don't know, it seemed a little bit small, don't you think? Yeah, the museums and exhibitions were not extensive. No. Certainly aspects of them were fascinating and it was all very well designed and very pretty, but certainly I think through our travels we've been to museums that have been significantly cheaper that have shown us a lot more. But I would say that the gardens are worthwhile coming to. They're absolutely stunning, so maybe you could just get a ticket for only the gardens, unless you're a huge fashion lover, in which case you would probably want to see the Musée Yusinahal as well. After we went to Jardin Majorel and walked through the Medina and Souk, we came back from Riyadh and had a nice rest. And now we are going to try and find somewhere cheaper, tasty to eat. 
Another thing to note about Morocco is that they tend to eat dinner late at about 9 p.m. Yep, so we're doing what the locals do. I got ground beef tagine for dinner tonight, and Nick got a royal couscous. So we just got back from dinner. It was absolutely delicious. It had like three types of meat on my plate, and everything else was beautifully done, as ever. So yeah, for the price of the meal, it was just phenomenal food. Can't fault it. But now we are going to turn in for the night ahead of our lovely Hamam experience tomorrow. So, yeah, and until then, take care. And keep smiling.